Participatory democracy commands new forms of organizations of the state. The traditional model of progressive governments in the form of so strong centralized institutions that take responsibility for all aspects of socioeconomic development through direct intervention can no longer can be considered the most appropriate model for the 21st century. Democracy must be based on active citizenship, and for that to happen, there is a need for institutions that allow this active citizenship to take place in order for more decentralized, participate forms of democracy to take place, there must be a sharing of power between elected officials and civil society on a permanent, ongoing basis at all levels of state organization. This is not a simple goal to achieve, and particularly it must, because it must be done while maintaining mechanisms that continue to enforce certain principles of universality, equity, and equality in the organization of the government but we must take up the challenge. Top-down solutions cannot work. No government, no matter how progressive it is, can have the flexibility and the intimate knowledge of local realities to be able to respond adequately to the specific needs of each community. This is even truer today than ever, for sustainable development demands a constant integration of economic, social, environmental, and cultural concerns and objectives. It is at the level of community that this integration can take place. And our challenge is to identify the mechanisms and the structures in each national context that allow this integration to pl take place while assuring through the exercise of state power the checks and balances to protect basic rights for all citizens. There are no simple answers to this challenge. But once again, civil society is showing the way. Yesterday, I listened to a representative of an organization of indigenous people from Peru who emphasized the need for his people to be able to control their land, their resources, their economy, their culture, their local institutions. This is the same demand we are hearing from communities in my country and in countries around the world as citizens come to together to empower themselves and take into hand their own development. The challenge now is to respect this bottom-up, empowering approach in which common territory and common culture become a space for new political institutions that work hand-in-hand -hand with national governments to assure a better quality of life for all citizens. The second question I want to comment on in this discussion on political power is the issue of economic democracy versus political democracy. Once again, it is a sad reminder of the state of democracy in the world to remind ourselves that even in countries where democratic institutions are functioning well, inequalities between the rich and the poor have grown over the past decade. The fundamental source of these growing inequalities resides in the economic system that globalization and neoliberal ideology has imposed on all countries. Nation states can no longer fully control their economies as international trade agreements undermine the sovereignty of nations. Populations living in the South have been the primary victims of this form of development. But even in countries in the North, the poor have become poorer and the rich more wealthy over the past decades. But once again, over the past decades, since the first World Social Forum, civil society has begun to show the way forward. We have not only understood that economic power cannot be disassociated from political power, we have started to do something about it. The growing movement for economic democracy that has manifested itself principally through the social and solidarity economy is an indication that the issue of political power has taken on an important economic dimension. The growing social and solidarity economy is rooted in relationships of proximity based on territory. Its de development is closely linked with local development and new forms of partnerships between different actors in an inclusive process of sustainable development encompassing economic, social, cultural, and ecological objectives. The last decade has clearly demonstrated that even at the level of the enterprise, there is need to change the forms of organization and the exercise of power. The short-term vision of good management based entirely on the need to reward outside shareholders has led to repeated economic, social, and ecological disasters. This we all know. But when we talk about democracy in the workplace, neoliberal economists tell us that this cannot work because it is not efficient and we cannot be productive in a democratic work environment. Once again, they are dead wrong. And we have more and more proof to show it. 
through our, through our practices within the solidarity economy. But even in more conventional circles, this is beginning to be recognized. The best example is the fact that the Nobel Prize for the Economy in 2009 was awarded to an American woman, Eleanor Armstrong, who has demonstrated that true good management, particularly of resources, is exercised not through big top-down government bureaucracies, nor through the private sector, but through de democratic citizen control, the very basis of the solidarity economy. The question of political power and economic power has always been at the heart of the vision of solidarity economy. In 2002, here in Porto Alegre, I had the opportunity to be part of the first panel on the solidarity economy organized in the context of the World Social Forum. Paul Singer, who one year later was named Brazilian National Secretary for the Solidarity Economy by Lula, was also on the panel. And the subject was Solidarity Economy as a Form of Radicalization of Democracy. The Solidarity Economy had already begun to be identified as a key component of the discussion of the struggle for democracy. And we were convinced, as we still are today, that the challenge of building democracy in the context of globalization had to be expressed at all levels and in all spheres of life. If it was true in 2002, it is even truer today. Democracy as the means of exercising political power must be present, not just in the political sphere, but in all aspects of our society and particularly in our economy. State organization must respond to the aspirations of men and women across the planet by allowing them to be actors and not simply spectators in the development of their communities, of their nations, of the planet. Our political institutions cannot simply promise to solve economic problems in place of its citizens. They must allow them to have access to the tools to participate actively in the transformation of their daily lives. They must allow them to be part of the decision-making processes to act together, not only on the political front, but within the heart of the economy. The need for participatory democracy goes beyond our political institutions. It must become an integral part of our economic institution. What the solidarity economy proposes fundamentally is a new relationship between the market, the state, and civil society. It does not seek to replace the state, but it recognizes that the sphere of the economy must be redefined to allow democratic forms of control and governance, not only through state intervention, whatever ever local level of governance from enterprise to global institutions. Um, and once again, our capacity and the movement is, is growing to be able to define those, those, uh, those ways of doing that. I don't have time to go into them. But we are, and we are pushing, innovating, not only in our demands, but in the very process of constructing public policy for the economy. Researchers speak of the need for a process of co-construction of public policy, where civil society is an active participant in defining and implementing policies in favor of the solidarity economy. This is an important political choice. It is an example of the importance of new forms of participatory democracy. For decades, the private sector has imposed its agenda in the area of economic policy. Why should we, actors of the, civil, of the social economy, solidarity economy, deprive ourselves of this possibility? After all, we are the real experts, best able, able to define the ways in which governments and civil society can work together in search of the common good. In conclusion, the issue of political power and state organization cannot be separated from the question of economic power. Economic power for the people cannot be won without access to political power. But political power, power will remain fragile and transitory without a fundamental transfer of economic power to the people. This is a challenge that all social movements must take on in the next decade. As an active member of the Solidarity Economy Movement, it is my profound hope that the new agenda for the World Social Forum will allow this dialogue to take place and that the Solidarity Economy Movement will have its place at the table in this debate. Thank you very much.